is the So this is the cerebrum. Ideally, the, the basal ganglia is sitting here. I'm going to pull this down so we can expand it and talk about it. So the basal ganglia, again, we've done in the basal ganglia, the pieces, the striatum, neostriatum is composed of caudate nucleus and the putamen nucleus. So I'm going to make that over here. Here is the nucleus caudate. And then I'm just going to create the so this is the putamen, sorry, and I'm going to connect caudate to it. Although you know the caudate nucleus is a long nucleus with the tail and then amygdala on that end. So this is just a representation of the caudate nucleus over here. So putamen, putamen, and caudate. You know that the caudate and putamen are actually connected in the interior part, and that is why they are also called neostratum that the, the area where they are connected is perforated by the internal capsule fibers. That is why striatum or, is, or striatal uh, appearance. Now, putum and caudate, then medially, so here if putum and caudate are present, medially here is the globus pallidus, which you know is again seen, globus pallidus in the interna and externa, globus pallidus interna and globus pallidus externa. Then medial to that is the thalamus, slightly dorsal and medial. So, I am just making that here, thalamus. And I am going to make sub subthalamus under the thalamus, although that is not the final anatomical position, but this is the subthalamus. Below this, below this, so again, then we have to go to the substantia nigra here as well. So we have, we have developed this area. Now we're going to make substantia nigra. So I'm going to go to the midbrain level. So let's say the midbrain is here. This is the superior colliculus, midbrain. So I'm going to make this is the substantia nigra pars reticularis. And then behind that is the substantia nigra pars compacta. So let's say this is the pars compacta. So substantia nigra pars compacta. In this one, the pars compacta anterior part of this has dopaminergic fibers. So this is the area which we are talking about. The neurodegeneration or the problem with the neurons occur here. Now, the dopaminergic fibers that originate from here, the fibers originate from here, dopaminergic neurons, cell bodies are present here in the substantia nigra. From there, the fiber end up, the fiber for this neuron ends up in the neostriatum. This is important, neostriatum. Now, this is a gabergic, this is a gabergic neuron. What that means is that in the pars compacta, in the substantia nigra pars compacta, the neuron cell body forms GABA. Then that GABA transmits all the way through the neuron and comes back to the nerve terminal where it is released. Okay, so, the you know. substantia nigra pars compacta forms the GABA here in the neuron cell body, then that GABA comes in here and is released on the neostratum. This GABA is inhibitory. Now, what does it do? What does it inhibit? The fibers here, the fibers here release acetylcholine, the neurons on which these fibers come and terminate, they in turn have local acetylcholine, ACH, acetylcholine. They release acetylcholine either locally or into the globus pallidus internus and externus. Now, you know the pathway, the direct pathway goes like this. Fibers come the, from the motor cortex into the striatum. 
from there fibers go to the globus pallidus internus from there fibers will go to the thalamus and from thalamus these would go back fibers will go back to the motor cortex so that is the direct pathway indirect pathway the fibers come out here then the fibers from the external will go to subthalamus from subthalamus the fibers will go to the internus from it, internus they would go back to the thalamus and then they would go up what is the what is the benefit here globus pallidus internus takes part in indirect pathway indirect pathway causes suppression direct pathway causes excitation now what is the basic problem here the basic problem here is this subthalamus's general function is to keep the motor area excited sorry i meant thalamus not the subthalamus you know that the thalamus is part of all the sensory inputs but in addition to that thalamus does one more function and that is that it excites the motor area this is part of the extra pyramidal motor system it excites the motor area and the thalamus in turn is inhibited by the basal ganglia so thalamus wants to excite the motor system primary motor cortex and the result of that motor cortex is the rigidity however the basal ganglia keeps the subthalamus keeps the thalamus suppressed now what would happen if the basal ganglia is not suppressing the thalamus thalamus will become excited that excitement would cause the motor area to be excited and that would cause the rigidity so that is what is happening the second problem is that the pars compacta has an important function here and that is the modulation of tone it helps the cerebrum cerebrum actually sends fibers to pars compacta as well and pars striatum as well substantia nigra so the benefit of this loop is that through this loop cerebrum and and substantia nigra together modulate the tone that we should have in our muscles while we are making movements so as soon as the tone modulation system dies or becomes abnormal the tonal properties of our muscles become abnormal that is where you see that the muscle movements become really difficult all muscles develop higher tone because of the thalamic excitement and of course the patient then develops problems with the motor related problems guys thank you very much for watching make sure that you like this video if you like it if you don't like it then do unlike like this video subscribe to the channel and please share this channel with others as well